I have to get my little phone right here because the young lady we about to talk to today, she gave me a book about herself. Ooh, <laughs> man, I, 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 I'm, I'm glad that I got, I got this young lady on. Let's, uh, let's, let's see, let's, let's see. She's a truck driver. She's, uh, she been a truck driver for six years. Six years, am I correct? Seven years, going on my seven. Yeah. Seven years, yep. Not only Thank that, you. not only that, but she's a plus size model. Oh yeah, yeah. Not only that, but she's uh she's a baker. She does custom cakes for you guys. Her CB handle is Cake Lady. So if y'all ever right. hear, if y'all ever hear her on Channel 19. And y'all want those good custom cakes? Holler at the cake lady. She comes from a family that owns a trucking company. So we about to talk about that. So I am about to bring on to the show. Now, let me make sure I get the name right, because, you know, I do beat up names like like Ali over here. So we're going to bring on Von Tressa Salter. Yeah. Yeah. The cake lady. Yeah, you did good on that thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How are you today, little cake lady? I'm all right. How about you? I am doing all right. I'm doing all right. Over here, just chilling over here at uh over here in Illinois. I got a load that's going down to uh down to Missouri. Um my fleet manager wanted, you know, told me that it needed to be there at seven o'clock in the morning, and uh, I pretty much told him that wasn't going to happen. Mm -mm. Nope, not going to happen at all. I told him it'll be there at about twelve in the evening. He was like, "Hmm, guess we just going to have to make that happen." Then I was like, "I guess we're going to have to because ten hours." Now I, I told him, I said, "Look, look now." I can drive on my, I, I, I could PC there if you want me to, if you want me to get it there in time, you know, I, 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 I could PC. I mean, it's only Illinois to Missouri is only like what, four, four hours, four and a half hours, give or take. Okay. I, I told him, I said, uh, I could PC. He was like, no, I don't think we better do that. I was like, yeah, I, I, I agree. <laughs> I mean, I could, you know, I don't have to worry about, you know, I don't have to worry about at night because, you know, I don't have to worry about DOT or or state troopers overnight. But, you know, if something happens, then, yeah. But then I know I, yeah. can't, I can't go back to, I can't go back to safety and say, hey, you know, my fleet manager said it was all right. And then my fleet manager, you know, not to say that he would or anything like that, but you you you, you know how some fleet managers are. They'll be like, I never told him that. Yeah, but you give mm -hmm. me a, but you give me a load that's that that's due at seven o'clock in the morning, bro. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so what 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 do that tell you? <laughs> They'll leave you hanging. Every man for themselves. You say every man for themselves, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, Miss Salter, man, tell the people a little bit about you about you and where you come from. I am the cake lady. This is my CB handle. Mm -hmm. um, you did say my name correctly. Von Tressa said how it's spelled. Still how it's spelled. All right. Von I Tressa. I like that. Let, let, me, let me stop you for a second. I I okay. like that name. That That is an unusual name. How did your parents come up with that name? My mom actually said that... Uh, when she was giving birth to me, that one of the nurses' name was Von Tressa. And my grandma was like, name her that. <laughs> I ended up with it. <laughs> I was that simple. Okay, okay. Moms just happened to look up and say, hey, I like that name. <laughs> right. And 28 years later, that, that name just stuck. <laughs> yeah. All right, you, right. You can continue. That That's a beautiful name, though. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, you, you can continue, Von Tressa. Oh, okay. 
I um this is my seventh year. Well, come October, make my seventh year driving eighteen wheelers. Something that I didn't think I'll be doing, but um, well, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the rundown on that. Go I was working at the prison, and uh, I was ready to leave. My mom asked me to pick up her trick from the truck stop and open it. I opened it. It was five thousand dollars just for that one week. So I'm like, wait a minute, you know, you been making this? <laughs> She was like, yeah, what you think I've been doing? So that's what got me into it. But um, I baked custom cakes. I've been doing that since I was a little girl. I didn't really get into uh, decorating until I became an adult. But you know how uh, us Southern people, our parents just pour stuff on you. It, I ended up liking it. So <laughs> I baked cakes. Um, and I model at Cushions Plus Size in Atlanta. Um, that's what I do. On some weekends, do group shoots, um, solo shoots. I schedule, and in in that, other people ask to shoot me too, so I shoot for them as well. Okay, so I'm kind of all over the place. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So let's 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 talk about a little bit where you come from. Like where 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 were you? You know, born or raised or. I was born in Dublin, Georgia. I'm from Wrightsville, Georgia. Wrightsville is very country. They don't have hospitals, so. <laughs> oh my God! Did <laughs> you say they don't have hospitals? <laughs> they don't. They they so got they country. got doc they got doctors, huh? Like if you get hurt or something like that, a doctor will come and get you. <laughs> they really don't have that. <laughs> so they got boy. A <laughs> so growing up in the country, what, what what was life like growing up in the country of Georgia? Say, say that one more time. I said, what was life like growing up in the country of Georgia? Um, I loved it. Um, I don't never want to be part of the city life. Like, I love the boonies. Okay. I, I love when the deer population by greater than the adult population or the people population. <laughs> okay okay so you still you don't so, have to worry about no traffic so you still so you still down there i mean you still live down in the boonies yes i, I live in dublin georgia uh even though i was born here but i was you know i went to school mm -hmm. i was raised Wrightsville, georgia went mm -hmm. to school in Wrightsville and uh washington county uh which is Fennersville, georgia um when i graduated i came to Dublin and came here because we had more college, colleges here. Um, originally supposed to went for nursing, decided to pull a lot, but um, yeah, I'm still in Dublin, Georgia to this day. Oh, okay, okay. So before before you got into trucking, what was what what was what was some of the stuff you used to do before you get in, before you got into trucking? Um, I started out at Golden Corral in the bakery. Then I went to the prison. I worked at uh, Wheeler Correctional Facility, and I worked at Riverbend Correctional Facility. That was a, a private prison. I did three years of that before okay. I started driving. Okay, so you so you was a pri a prison was you a prison guard or what? What were you? I was a guard. You was okay. So <laughs> let me let me ask you this now. Let me ask you this. Uh, being being a prison guard, was there was there some type of schooling that you had to go to? Did you have to go and get your your guard certificate, or uh, what was what was the process of you just what you do? Just filled out an application, or or what? Have you ever heard of uh, the Tipton College beside the House in Forsyth, Georgia? D did I hear? Her, I'm sorry. Did I hear her the what? Have you ever heard of uh, Tifton College beside the scale house in Forsyth, Georgia? Tempton College. Tifton College. Tempton College. College. That, with a T, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't This is where all the guards, the state patrol, um, everybody, that's where everybody go training, right there beside the scale house uh, in, in oh. Forsyth. Okay, so, so you was you you being a county correctional was it county? Oh, I'm sorry, you 
my my bad for not paying attention. You you did mention you said it was private, right? Yes, private prison. Okay, so but but they all train together. They all train together. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So being at a private prison, was you was you armed or unarmed? Um, so uh, if I worked in the inside of the building, I was unarmed. If I worked on the outside, I was armed. Oh. Um, I worked on the inside until the last year that I was at the prison. I had a bad car accident. I cracked my sternum and I cracked my pelvic bone. It was a little young 15 year old did a U turn in a curve and I was coming around on my way to work. So oh I ended up God. being a little person. Of, yeah, T boning. He was all right. I was. Oh my <laughs> but, God. Um, but it was his fault, yeah. though, right? Yeah, yeah. He was at fault. He can't. He was 15 when he did. He didn't have an adult in the car. Um, they said he wasn't ready to get his license until he was like 22, 23 because of that. So he wasn't, so he was an unlicensed minor driving his mama's car that he took from, that, that he took out the driveway to go, to go. His daddy, oh, his daddy's car. His, his daddy's old school pickup truck. I hit that thing and barely bent. <laughs> like wow. my car was screwed up, but it barely put a dent in it. And I was doing the speed limit. Oh my God! And and I, I guess he was all right. So was was mm -hmm. the insurance took care of you? You better know it. Oh, okay. <laughs> it that's, took me that's, almost that's... two years to get my money, but oh, okay, it, it happened. Okay, well that's God that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Yeah. But I'm I am I am glad I am happy for you to still be here, man. To uh, talk about that, thank you. Uh, little little whipper snapper. Uh, but you know what? I can't. I, you know, I, 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 I was the youngster. I, I took my mama's car. I, I never got in an accident, but I did get pulled over by the cops, though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> drive, you know, driving in East Cleveland and got got pulled over, and. Uh, and uh cop came up to the window, looked at me. Kind of young there, son, are you? How, how old are you? I'm uh, 15. Uh, do you have a license? Registration? What's that? <laughs> so luckily, luck, luckily for me, I, uh, you know, I, he... He called my mother. Uh, you know, he didn't take me in. So this this cop was pretty cool. He didn't take me in. He called my mother. My mom's had, uh, you know, one of her coworkers to come over to, to get me and the car and all like that. So I I was one of the fortunate ones. Now, I don't know if that happened in today's youth. <laughs> but, right. But... You know, thankfully, you know, that didn't, you know, nothing happened, you know, nothing happened to me. But it did teach me a lesson, though. It did teach me a lesson. It taught me not to get caught by the police. <laughs> no, I'm right. just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but, but it's true, though. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So you, so you, you was a, so you was a correctional officer for how long? For three years? All right, so what was life? When I started, I was 19 years old when I went to the chain game to work. What? You was 19? Yeah. 19, literally just turned 19. What? What made you decide to go and be a correction officer at that young age? Um, Life. Uh, I realized stuff that you plan, like they teach you, be a nurse when you grow up. Do this, do that. Go to college. Well, they didn't tell you you needed money for bills and that just because you went to college don't mean they're going to take care of you. Uh, you still going to come up on the short end when it comes to tuition, and I, it was stressful. So um, I knew that was the easiest thing I could do, like, for spur of the moment. Like, who's going to hire me right now that I'm going to make decent money? I need a car. I need a way back and forth to school. I need a way to pay my bills because when I was working at Go to Corral, I only was making two fifty two every two weeks. What bill can I pay? Damn, you yeah. you you so, you was getting tips though, right? Wait, wait. You said Golden. Well, wait. Ain't Golden Corral? Ain't ain't Golden Corral like a self serve buffet? Yeah. 
Okay, so and I worked, I worked in the bakery, so I oh, didn't get tips. So you wasn't getting tips, but you was only getting no. you was only getting two hundred dollars. By the time they took out those taxes, that's all I got. We we barely got twenty hours a week, so Damn. that's all I was left with. By the time taxes happened, and that's all we had because we didn't have no benefits. But that's all I was getting. Damn. Two fifty-two. And I was like, this can't be like this, you know. Got to be a little more than like this two hundred dollars, because. By the time I pay my bills, I don't have nothing. So now I'm forced to eat, you know, the bad unhealthy stuff that we that we was brought up on, but we shouldn't be eating. But you, so a lot of that was going on. So you, I, I had to do something different. I was like, I can't do this. You was you you was staring. I'm I'm assuming now you you was you was still staring staying with your parents when yep. you was only making two hundred dollars a week. I nope. I actually got a story for that too. Huh? But, um, I was yeah. I it, I gotta things are better now. I'm sitting like that. Mm-hmm, things mm-hmm. are better, but um, I was ward of court, so basically, um, defect up till I from the first time I was fourteen till I was grown, I was defect custody. So wait, wait, you know, wait, I, wait, I, wait, I, wait, I, wait, wait, wait. You you kind of muddled out there. You you was what custody? Um, defense. I was uh, ward of state, ward of court. You, you? What, was, what yeah. the hell, man? <laughs> uh, he was black. Um, you know, my mother's ex-husband. There was some things going on there. It was supposed to be happening. Um, mainly to my sister, one of my sisters. But um, it, it was it was a lot. Is it's better now. I'm putting it like that. She's not with him no more. That's right. what needed to happen. Right. That's what needed to happen. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, let's 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 get back to the jail, man. So what was what you what was life like working at a prison for a female? Was uh, it a what? Well, let me ask you this: Was it an all women's prison, mitts prison, or all male yeah. prison? It was male. Okay, so now let's get into the let's get into the nitty gritty. What what was what was life like working in a in a in a male in a male prison? It was uh, I had fun in prison. I'm be honest, it was funny. It, a lot of days it was it was like being in high school, like where people just say stupid stuff out of, just out the way, just out the blue, and either you got to choose to be serious or laugh about it. So. I played poster face as much as I could, but I couldn't laugh. I done left at them people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I couldn't laugh no more. I was just talking to somebody about some stuff that went on at that prison. But um, other than that, I poker faced a lot. Because um, if you get the happy smiley too much, they think you like them. Um, um, They'll take advantage of start, it. Yeah. They going to they gonna close in on you and Start asking you stuff you're supposed to, you're supposed to be doing. They know they're not supposed to be saying to you. So okay. that's what I was saying. On the on like prison is nothing like how they show it on TV. Put it like that. And I were in media security, so that means I All had right, a break, little mat. Break break it break it down for me because you know I I did come across a couple of episodes of sixty days in. So yeah, break break it down for me. How 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 is it like versus it's reality? Totally different. It's totally different. Um, I read in media security prison, but at media security, they have people that, you know, got match dates or that's never going to get out, got licenses uh, at the prison to keep the prison life balanced. So it'll never be like it, how it is on TV. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to never say, I ain't going to never be no gang wars. I, I, on my first day on the floor, I got to see that firsthand. It was the uh, blacks against the Hispanics. Okay. And when I say, Stabbing people up within arm reach of me. It was crazy. Now, I me, mean, I already know I can't stop two men from, from fighting. So I know I can't stop 40 men from fighting. I opened the next door and went in and waited. <laughs> so that was the beginning of them saying, you know what? You be serious outside, but you're funny. <laughs> they oh, used okay. to say that. But um, I mean, come on, what am I supposed to do? I mean, I'm by myself. And the guy that was on the floor I mean, left me in there by myself. Okay. So, I had to make a choice. I'm going to go into the door that's not fighting. 
And that's what I did. And I called Cole because it was hard for me to get in on the radio because everybody was talking. But um, I was able to finally get in and call a Cole. But just from me being in there, we did all going on, like, not freaking out or crying nothing. I gained respect from him like that. Okay. So it's the same game. The thing you had to do was be the same way every day. So today you can't come in and say, I'm going to play with the inmates, but then tomorrow you're going to be serious. You can't do that. Okay. You can't do that. But, like I said, when I said I had fun, it just was, it reminded me a whole lot of stuff that used to go on in high school. Like, you're like, you know, these some childish people. But you also got some intelligent people there. Like, no, everybody didn't do something that they said they did. But a lot of people did. And you will hear people's stories. Um, the older guy, um, we had to fill out forms for everything he did at prison. And I asked him to sign my name because I didn't feel like getting up at the time because we had been running. We had a long day. They had a bad fight. I didn't feel like getting up at the time. But he was like, Miss Salter, I can't do that. I said, why you think? He was like, I told God I would never sign nobody else's name on this. So I'm like, what you mean by that? What you in here for? He was like, oh, well, I made my living by making people have accidents. Like, just get in front of people and slam on brakes and stuff. That's not what he got locked up for. He did that until the day he got locked up for something else. And he said what they used to do is refer those people to go to the same doctor. That doctor was in on it, too. He made money off of them committing crimes. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So Fraud, pretty much. He, yeah, fraud. But they got him on fraud charges. But as far as uh, identity stuff, that's what they really got him for. Oh, okay. So that's why he said he wasn't going to sign my name. <laughs> well, why but, would you? Like, Why would you want him to sign your name anyway? It, it was nothing but a laundry form. Like, basically saying they picked up laundry. But why, why, why yeah. would you want them to sign we, your name? We had, look, if you had that day that we had, you would understood. We had mm. a long day. Like, but, to the point, it was like a mini riot. And this was a prison. This was the second prison I worked at. It wasn't organized like the first one. Mm-hmm. So, it got out of hand. And it, it should have never got to that point, but if people was doing their job. So we spent the rest of that night running around, locking people down, moving people from this door, transfer people. We had a long day. Like, you mm-hmm. wouldn't understand. Okay, yeah. I, I don't know if I would so, have somebody else to sign my something. name now. I'm just saying. Look, I did, at the time, it really didn't even matter because, what, what could you know, if they want to do it, it's going to do it anyway. Because you sign so much stuff, they, they learn how to write how you write. So oh, okay. it really didn't matter, but okay. being that it was just a uh, laundry farm, I didn't care. Oh, okay. It was All just right. a laundry farm. So did uh did yeah. did any other did any other in did any other male inmates try to uh try to I don't know try try to push up on you? Was any of them flirting with you or anything like that? No. Um. Some of them will see how you are, like, try to get close to you. But like I said, I played poker face a lot, so they, they stay out of face so they didn't know, you know, what I'm going to do. And they knew, like, once I got there and I got put on permanent post in places, they knew I didn't play. Like, I came in and do my job. Like, you make it hard for me, I make your day hard. So I really didn't have to worry about that. They went more towards weak officers as far as uh, who to try as far as getting in the brain and stuff mm-hmm. or a personal relationship, they targeted weak officers. Strong officers that didn't usually happen to, but some people did do that. But they won't target a strong officer because it's harder to break them down. They have to get somebody who's already vulnerable. Okay. So if you come in, you acting like you're scared. You you want it, they can get the brain something in there. So was there more than was there more than more than one well was there more than one of you, uh, females, that was that was in the prison, or you was the only one? To be honest, the chain gang is eighty percent female. Like as far as staff, you got more females working at the chain gang than males. Oh, okay. And that's kind of a problem. And um, what it boils down to is a lot of men, and I see this in the real world. A lot of men scared to give another man an order. And if they feel like, okay, I got to tell this man what to do, they feel like it's taking cool points away from them. Like, they don't, they don't really be about that type of lifestyle. So, hold up, 
It don't be that. You, you saying another man is afraid to give another man an order? Man, it's personal. But they would mm-hmm. take. But but a woman giving an order to a man, they'll take that. Like they'll take it. I, I don't but, have but a problem. If, if I was in a well, I mean, if I was in that, you know authority role i mean i wouldn't take it you know i wouldn't let it go to my head but i will be authoritative right. like you know i you know it's i, I get you, you gotta have you you, you you gotta you gotta be you I can't you have this. a lot of men just want to you know i just want to be the cool officer that, that's like the you thing. can't be the cool <laughs> officer Right, you can't. That's how you get run. That's that's how you get run up on. You gotta have some type of. You gotta have, you gotta have a chest, right? Right. You know. Right. So, if you come up to a dude and you see him doing something that's not, you know, that's that's not part of the, you know, what he's not supposed to be doing, you gotta be like, bro, you know, put that down. Now, if you know the right. guy, you know, if he happens to look up at me and. You know, like he's about to raise up on me. Then, yeah, I'm going to have to put his ass down. I mean, you know, that's... Most of the time, it wouldn't happen like that. Okay. One thing about it, they know that they have to be in there with you. You have to be in there with them. So right. This is an everyday thing. So they okay. ain't going to mess up the officer-inmate uh, relationship unless you make it that way. Make you know what I'm saying? Okay. I see you set the foundation. You set in the foundation, so you can't come in and let them do what they want to do one day. Next day, you be like, it's simple stuff as telling them, don't sit on the room table, don't sit in the window, don't put your hands in your pants. They they didn't play that because they mean somebody's jacking, and that's the truth. Right. Um, don't have your hands in your pants. Uh, unplug something uh, that they don't rig up to boil water in a mop bucket to cook their noodles. They, they don't supposed to do stuff like that. So it's simple stuff as that. Like you, they want you walking past them every day, letting them do that. They know, okay, you ain't serious about your job because these people can see you on the camera. You know what I'm saying? You're mm-hmm. not telling them what they're supposed to do. So now when these people come do their rounds, the other people, which they did them every morning, when they come do their round, your door might together. They're going to be on you because you're supposed to keep that door keep together. Door you're together. supposed to make them do what they're supposed to do. Okay. It's too many people in that dorm for stuff not to be together because – it don't take the folks long to get it together. There's so many people. Like, the first person I worked there, it was 3,100 inmates there. Mm-hmm. 3,100. I had six pods, and in every pod, there was 62 inmates in it. So <sighs> that whole dorm is mine. Now, th- now, this is a private prison, right? Right. So, a private prison, like, it's, this is like owned. This is like owned by an individual person. How do they manage to? What they got a contract with the, with the courts, with the state. How how private prison work? I'm telling you, private prison is nothing but a mini fed. Um, they still tied up with the state, so you still getting inmates that's from the state prison. Now, like I said, we all go to training together. It's the same thing. It's a, it's a better pay scale. The state get paid salary, and when they get stuck on the clock with overtime, they don't know when they get their money. Okay. Private prison. Private prison. Um, anything over forty hours is time and a half. Huh. So every two weeks, you getting your money right then. Not only that, they got air conditioner, they got heat, they got flat screen TV, they got lights huh. that you can control from another room. From central control, like this is for the prisoners. <laughs> Look, they ain't no living luxury life. Like, that's you know, what I'm, I'm listening. To. I'm, I'm hearing this like flat screen TVs yeah. and oh man, yeah. they, they got it made. So if I ever to do made, if, so if I you know what so if I ever to do something, I I can I request that I can go to a private prison. Uh, no. <laughs> <say> no, no, <laughs> uh, <laughs> everybody and they mama would be there if that was the case. <laughs> <laughs> but look, I can't say not some mom be in and they and like they left something in or they got to get back to uh, <laughs> Now, let me ask you for for TV shows like 60 Days In, you know, uh, 
I, I, I tend to think that's fake, but but for shows like that, they they the the producers would get contract. I mean, would would get a contract with a private prison in order to shoot some of the some of the scenes that they could shoot in there. So that's so. Would you consider that a private prison that they're in on on that TV show? If you ever if you ever caught it. I've never watched Six Days in. I don't see some of the other shows, and I can't even like by the top of my head can't call them. But um, I would say if any of that stuff is happening, it's in a private aspect. Them inmates ain't crazy now. They, I feel like it's a good lot of putting on. They ain't for the do all this stuff from the cameras unless them people letting them do. Like I said, they only can do what you allow them to do. Mm-hmm. Unless them people letting them do that on a daily basis. For the most part, they ain't for the draw heat to people coming in their dorm, shut it down stuff, or just like they run the place. They they ain't gonna too much do it like that. It usually don't work like that. They sneaky. Like, you have to learn each individual in the dorm to realize the stuff that go wrong and all that. Like, I found the room one day, um, which it wasn't a room that was found, but it was a, a supply closet where they keep the cleaning stuff, which like I said, part of their day every day is to clean their dorms and straighten them. Just like you do in the military, pretty much. Okay. The same thing every day. So um, I was I started out on day shift, but we was five to five at the time. But then we ended up going seven to seven, and that was kind of getting a little rough on me with my back. I got scoliosis, so I was like, "Well, I'm just gonna go to night shift and help them since I be here all the time anyway." Because I work in sixteen and stuff as well. Because, like I said, I. I just came from college trying to pay bills, and I wasn't getting no money, so I was trying to get me some money. <laughs> okay. So I started doing a lot of overtime. And um, you know, with night shift, I started noticing how they was different from the daytime and the night. I'm like, at night, they be in this little closet all the time. What is they doing in there? First of all, they can't open the door without a key. Mm-hmm. So what I was doing is, is this is part of most officers drive too. They don't like to do it because you got to use fingers. But they used to stuff the locks with tissue, like, down to 40 can, you already know wet tissue is going to get hard, so it's going, it's not going to go nowhere. So, basically, they could pop the door whenever they want to go do what they want to do. Okay. And that's what it was doing. It was going now, charging cell phones and everything. It was like, I think that night they found, like, 13 phones. And, but I had been watching them for the longest, and I had already said, I said, when I get a chance and get, you know, somebody down here that's going to help me, I'm pulling the phones out of the room because I know this is what they end up doing. And time you hit that door, like to go in, it's twelve, twelve. Like that, that real life happened, like how I do on TV. <laughs> <laughs> they do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're gonna. That means I officers enter the room. Whatever y'all doing, get right because they walking around. Because we had to do rounds every thirty minutes. Okay. All right. So, so most of the time they gonna put their stuff up. They ain't brave enough to have this. Some are, but most of them aren't brave enough to just have this stuff out because that's extra charges. Uh, cell phones are extra three or five years, I can't remember. Uh, but it most likely, a lot of them don't get that time. They just violate their parole. They have to do their max sentence if they get this stuff added on. But, how was um, how was people how was people getting contraband in? I mean, don't you guys like like pat down the people that come? Point. You have a checkpoint, but like, like I said, that ties back to people doing their job. If people do their job, a lot of stuff won't get in. The same officers that want to bring that stuff in because the inmate offer them money. They also, just like how inmates watch us, officers, they want to do something they, 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 uh, that they didn't want to do. They watched officers that did checkpoint. A lot of people that worked in checkpoint was not 100% doing their job. That's why when somebody who real life did their job came up there, everybody felt like, oh, this officer doing the most. They don't need to put her, you know, they'd be mad about it, but they mm-hmm. was on their job. What you mad for? So how, how so is some, know, but they, so how is, they some, figure out who works. How, how is some people is, is getting the contraband in? I mean, I know, by, I know you said they're not doing their jobs and all like that. So obviously they're right. not patting, they're not patting down the females. They're not, you know, patting down the females even like they're they supposed to. Even if they them down, they wasn't doing it hundred percent. Like, oh, uh, you went through murder detectors, you went out. Like, why a bra, uh, and this is something that I had to go through. I, I'm i a big breasted girl, so why a bra is something that's going to go off every time that you go in the uh, prison. Right. But the, the new prison that I had worked at, the last one I worked at, uh, 
they made you go in the bathroom and, you know. Take your, yeah, take they, a bra like, off, right? <laughs> yeah. But a lot of those officers didn't feel comfortable going in the bathroom with some another. I didn't care. You know what I'm saying? Because ain't nothing that inmate could do for me, to be honest. Okay. So I didn't care about going in the bathroom. If you want to see it, I, I show them if they wanted to see Cause I didn't, I didn't have nothing to hide. But you had some people that would put up a fight, like, "Oh, what we gotta do all this shit here, doing like this, like she likes me or something," you know. But they always be, you know, female, female. But um, that's supposed to be an extra measure if you go off in the med step now. Uh, as far as visitation went, that's where I seen a lot of stuff come in too. People put them in baby diapers. Um, like you know how they bring extra diapers so they bought a baby there and all that. They used to put it in their baby diaper and get it in there. Um, up under their breast, that was a common place. Uh, between their legs, they'll put pads on, put the contraband under it, and you know, you you can feel all day, but you don't know what you feel. You know what I'm saying? You right. can't spend a whole lot of time in a private area of a person because now you you start a kind of sexual harassment at this point. Right. So a lot of people didn't want that attached to their name, so they wasn't thoroughly doing their job. So you had that. You got um, anal cavity. People bring out in night. It's, Doctors have to do that. We we couldn't do that. So let me ask you this: <laughs> but, If 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 how how is they passing it? Like like how is they passing it to the inmate? The inmate get it. Don't 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 you guys supposed to pack them down before y'all take them back to their to their to their cell or whatever? That, that goes back to what I was saying about them being understaffed in each pod. We had one door in each pie. Each door had six pies. Each pie had 62 people. So it, there's no way that you had time to pat search every single inmate. They all act together when they go to lunch, when they go to yard call. You, it, it's hard. So basically, uh, in the time game, you just randomly picking who you want to pat search. And somebody who got something, trust me, they ain't going to give you no problem because they know that they mess, they, you know, they, they, they dirty right now. They're not gonna get in your trash. They're gonna do what they supposed to. You ain't gotta tell them twice, do that. Okay. So you gonna while you up there fumbling with somebody who's giving you a hard time, everything getting in. You know what I'm saying? So okay, okay. They, you just they just understaffed all the way around. All right, that's what's up, man. So what? So a, after the accident, uh, that's when you decide to leave. Did, did you leave on your own, or or did they force you out because of the accident? say i um there's posts like uh working in mind control the p car stuff like that that they give pre- pregnant people i was able to do um uh, you, you could have seen me on a normal day you wouldn't think nothing was wrong with me because one like i said i got scoliosis and i don't use it as my excuse to not do nothing not the word not nothing i still do everything now lately my back has been hurt a little more but um i guess because i'm getting older and i won't have the surgery so <laughs> but I don't let it limit me. And at the time, like, even though my chest was cracked, my hip bone track was cracked, I just got a light duty profile from the doctor. And so I could still come to work because, mm-hmm. like I said, I didn't want to go backwards in life and be like, dang, I went to this job so that I could get ahead. Now I'm getting pushed back. I, I didn't let this stop me. So okay. Um, okay. I kept working at, I actually changed prison in the midst of that because it was a lot of uh, people, <laughs> um, calling in on Fridays. So when I just had my accident, I kind of got target for um, getting free pit, like how we say about the inmates, getting free pit to getting harassed by the supervisors. Like uh, one lady, she told me, oh, y'all young people. Remember I told you I was 19? I started, y'all think y'all supposed to come to work and not do nothing? So she tried to put me on the post that the doctor had told me I can't go to. You know what I'm saying? Because I couldn't stand on my feet long, none of that, because I had cracked bones. Mm-hmm. Really and truly, I probably shouldn't even have been on the inside of the facility, but at the same time, if that's the, if that's the case, if I couldn't be there, pregnant people shouldn't have been there either. So that's why he gave me a lot of the profile. I still can come to work, but I just had to work a certain post. But because I was young, people like to target me as, Oh, I'm gonna make you do what, you, what I want you to do. You know what I'm saying? But I've never been that person. Up in the country. Okay. <laughs> and my grandma taught me that it's not how you, not how you do it. It's not, it's not what you do. It's how you do it. So I don't have to cuss you out to get my point across. But I'm not gonna let you drag me like, oh, you a child. You are gonna do what I say because you're younger than me. You know. Right. So if my doctor 
gave me a profile, told me what I can't do. How are you going to tell me what I can, I should be doing because of my age? Okay. You know, because my personal situation didn't have nothing to do with what you were trying to get me to do. You know what I'm saying? So, and I didn't have to keep on going through all that with you every time all because your office wasn't coming to work. <laughs> you know what okay. I'm saying? It, it wasn't my fault. All right. So, so I ended up having to write up some supervisors. Okay. So, all right. So, so you decided to, uh, you decided to leave. Uh, you decided to leave and, uh, you, you, the next move was, uh, the next move was trucking. So how did you, how did you get it? Well, I'm going to assume that your family kind of inspired you to get into trucking. Mm -hmm. So did, so did you go to, uh, a trucking company to get your license or you went through a trucking school to get your license? I went to a trucking school. I actually stayed at the prison a whole nother year before I left. Uh, I went to a trucking school and I, I stayed, I got put back on a first shift so I can go to school at night. Okay. All and right. I did that for 10 weeks. Okay. So they, of course, you know, of course you got your license and you was happy on that. Did you, uh, now you mentioned you mentioned in your profile that your your fa- your family owns uh, a trucking company, but did you yeah. but did you go through another tr- did you go through a trucking company before you you know you got with your family or what what was the what was the transition? Um, I tried originally to drive for them, but my mama would tell you this girl went riding no truck as a child. Uh, she didn't finish driving no truck. That's what she told me. Like when I, before I went to truck driving school, I had asked her to teach me how to drive. She was like, "You know, you're not gonna drive a truck." So I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna ask her again." I asked again. Eventually, she was like, Mm-mm. "You ain't gonna drive no truck." She said, "You wouldn't even ride in a truck, so why would you?" She said, "You ain't for drive no truck." And that's what she told me. So I was like, "You know what? I'm just going to the college." So I went on to the college. I found out what I needed, and I, somebody had gave me word that uh, if I would have waited a couple more months to the next program started that I wouldn't have to pay nothing for it, for my ID. So I waited. So I didn't have to pay that $1,600. Okay. So I went, I went to, um, to driving school and I, I started out at where well, it used to be Willie Shaw. Uh, I drove at MCT, the MCT, the refrigerator company of it. And I did that for three months. Now I, had, I started during the winter time, so I hated that. <laughs> well, the winter time, the winter time is the best time to learn how to drive a truck. <laughs> yeah, what they said. Yeah, I did it. I did it for three months, but I said, you know what? But for three I'm months, what what happened within that three month period? Why? What, what happened? Uh, we did most fit and anything. Um, I only supposed to have gotten ten thousand miles with a trainer. It took me three months to get there because we they kept shutting the interstate down. It was that year where all those real bad storms were coming across, and even Georgia got hit and Atlanta was messed up. It was that year. Mm-hmm. So we were like everywhere <laughs> on the west coast, and we just weren't making no getting no miles. So it took me a long time to get it, and when I did finally get it, they gave my own truck and. The seat was broken. Like, I don't know what whoever was driving, what they were doing, dog tearing up the seat and the main uh, support of everything. So, so, you know, like I said, I got back issues. So I was like, mm, y'all got to fix the seat <laughs> before I tried to go. You know, it wasn't going to work. But before I even went on that road with a trainer, my parents tried to put me in a truck. But, you know, being that I had, it came to them first and she told me no. I had a, you know, you didn't want to, you, you, you didn't want to, uh, you, you didn't want to give your parents, you didn't want to work with your parents, even though they, they, they didn't want you to have, you know, they didn't want you to drive a truck, but yet when you got your license, yeah. now they come into you like, Oh, okay, well here, here, here's a truck. But you, you right. decided to go, you decided to go company driver with, a with, a another company, uh, with right. the time that you was with the trainer, uh, what was uh what was the training like? Uh, sketchy. Uh, first of all, the first trainer I had, he should be training no females. <laughs> he don't know how to control himself. Okay. He likes to ask you 
personal questions like what size are those referring to my breasts mm. um having a conversation with you looking dead at your chest and you can't see nothing because i'm you know it reminds me a lot of the friends like dude i'm fully clothed what are you looking at i mean i can't hide it because right i mean i can't but he don't have to he, he don't have to be like all noticeful with it. I mean he could have just right. he could have just hit the peripheral like you know right. what I'm saying? And he could have just hit that. But it's supposed right. to be professional and I guess he wasn't he he wasn't all that professional. So how how did that how how did that make you feel uh being being in I mean in the truck like that with 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 a trainer that's that's coming on to you all the time. One, I didn't know. I didn't know what to do because I was serious about you know all I kept putting in my mind at first was I only got to do ten thousand miles from him and like I can tell you now on average now I do three thousand miles a week so you know that should have took me a month but maybe that maybe that but it it was taking so long so it was like. All I can do is defend myself. You know, I'm not a pushover. I really, really change. I know how a lot of men operate. Not saying everybody, but a lot of men operate. So all I got to do is stand firm on what I say, and he'll stop. You know, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I don't want to make nobody lose their job all because, you know, lust or however he's looking at me. But um, I had no told him, you know, don't do this, don't do that. I couldn't even learn how to back because he was using that as his way of getting free feel. Huh? Yeah. Free wait. Anytime I try to back whatever. What do you mean free fi- free feels like how, man? Because that's da- that's dangerously sexual harassment now. Right. And that's what that's what pushed me over the edge and said when we went to when we got to Virginia, I went here call Carpet. I said, I can't do it. I called Carpet. Um, they found a load that will bring me back towards Georgia and find me another trainer. But they had to beat around the bush about letting him know what was happening. So they basically was trying to say, you know, she got a family emergency. She got to get back. So they tried it. But he caught on. He knew. He Wait knew. a minute. Well, how the hell he caught a cop a feel off of you? How is that possible? Um, you know how you, you're backing right. And yeah. You know, basically, you need both hands on the wheel or however, be especially being new. I had both of my hands on the wheel. Okay. But um, he used to reach over and grab the wheel, but he would do it to where he basically back cussing me. You know what I'm saying? Hold, so, hold up. I'm, hold up. I'm stop, like, stop. Stop. Hold up. Hold up. Wait. Number one, old boy supposed to be outside guiding right. you, not right. inside. He's supposed to be outside guiding you. Swing to the left, the trailer swing to the right. Swing to right. the right, the trailer swing to the left. To the he's left. supposed mm-hmm. to be he's supposed to be outside like like one of them one of them uh dudes like that, that had the with the airport that be guiding the that be right. guiding the airplane. That that's him. Yo, that way, that way and Swing around. Make sure you get out and look. No, nah, right. bro. How the hell he's teaching it's you how to back? How the hell he's teaching you how to back if he's grabbing the wheel over you? That's why I couldn't never learn how to back. <laughs> uh-uh. That's that's why. Like um, like I said, I knew how to back enough to the point of you know passing school, but. You know, once you get out here in the real world, got a back beside trucks, back in docks, other trailers, stuff that you can actually damage, it was different. Like, I knew what I needed to do. I just had to learn how to sit up. And that was the thing. But I couldn't learn how to do nothing because he kept reaching over me. So, okay. That so, was the issue. did you, did you, you reported him, right? You, you had to report yep. him, right? Yeah. What was, I, I had to because. If I don't came to you on more than one occasion letting you know, hey, I'm not comfortable, I'm uncomfortable with this, and you keep doing it, you know, and I'm telling you, like, I don't, you, you make me feel uncomfortable, and you keep on doing it. I just had to go, I was like, you know, forget this man job, tell these people are going on. When I did that, how about several other female drivers came forth and told them that the same thing happened with, him with, the, with them with the same trainer? Did he still have a job? I don't know, but I know he left with a load. 
Okay, so do you, so you don't know the outcome of of what happened with him after you guys nope. came and told him that. Nope. When I came, and they put me in another what, truck. What company? And, I, and I, how long ago? Well, this well, this must have been seven yeah, years ago. Twenty thirteen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this seven years ago. Okay. So I I hope that he's still not with the company. I hope but, so too. But yeah, that's man. That's that's not. Mm-mm. That's that's mm-hmm. not cool right there. That's uh, it wasn't. That that's like I said. That's border. That's not even borderline. That's sexual harassment. Period. It is. You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. That's that's not cool right there. All right. So right. you was able to. Uh, well, of course you was able to come up out of it. You you know you got your own truck. Have you you did you go to a different company? Uh, did you go I, to a different I company, actually, or you stayed with them? I, I, I actually stayed because my fear was being out of work. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I had a lot going on. I wanted, I needed some money. So uh, I was like, I can't sit out of work because when I worked in the previous, I worked 16 hours shifts, and I was only home twice a month. And there was the own uh, payday, which I was already, the way my schedule fell, I was already off on payday. I used to use that day to go pay bills. So think about me going from working 16 hours a day almost every day to now I'm sitting home, you know, that was a big jump. And like I said, even though I had just had an accident, they had finally paid me and everything, I ended up having to live off that money because, one, we wasn't getting no miles on the road. Then I was only getting $400 a week for training. Uh, that that wasn't that wasn't it. The, I ended up with another trainer who was an older guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I had no issues. But, uh, like I said, we wasn't getting miles. The only issue with him was he didn't want to take a bath. <laughs> He didn't, he didn't believe in taking that bath, <laughs> and then I didn't like that. Like some places we used to go, he liked he liked it like uh, truck stops, like I used to park to here in Dublin, mm-hmm. um, where it don't be a whole lot of traffic and stuff, but they ain't have a shower. You know what I'm saying? So, like I told you, I'm a female. I have female issues, and I have two babies every day. Like I can't do what you're doing. He ain't care. So I basically. Had to let him know, hey, look, I, I hate to have to be looking like the problem if I have to tell something again, but we got to do better than this. I'm not going nowhere and spending three days not taking a shower. That's not happening. <laughs> and even though we had wipes and all that look, but they call it a bird bath. That, that That's not a bath, not to me. Well, I, I used to, well, I mean, I, I, take a sh- I, I, I take a shower. Yeah, but if you get a chance, if you get in a, in a in a situation that you're not able to, yeah, baby wipes works right. every time. But no, you 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 got to take a shower, man. I mean, there's too many right. of these truck drivers out here. Ain't ain't you ain't no it. it's no more it's no more renegade truck driving. Ain't no more outlaw truck driving. Not what not what ELDs, man. So right, you do a ten hour, get that ass out there, and and you at a truck stop. Get that ass out there and and and, and take a shower. I'm right. right. I'm right across the street from a loves. As soon as I get finished, I'm taking a shower. I want to walk right. right across the street. Don't take that long. Don't take that long, babe. Nah, don't don't take that long at all, man. So all right, so your fa- so your family, uh, I mean your family, uh, is is in the trucking business. Uh, says here for like what, fifteen years? Who longer than that? My mom will been driving herself for twenty one years. So this, so this is your, so, so this is your mother's company. My mom and well, basically my daddy's, but it's half and half. Uh, seven of trucks is one of them, and eight is the other one. So oh, okay, they, okay. Yep. So the name mm-hmm. of the name, the name of the company is JV Trucking. John and Veronica. Mm-hmm. John and Veronica Trucking. So they've been mm-hmm. so so they've been doing the damn thing for years, man. So do you now drive for your family or? Yes, uh, after that third month, I came home. <laughs> I couldn't oh, do okay. it no more. I was like, I'll keep getting put in bad situations. And after, like I said, I put that truck in the shop about their seat. They supposed to have ordered the seat. Post came in that Friday. Okay, I was just gonna, you know, jump the car here to Atlanta, go into the yard. Just told me to call first. The truck was gone. And everybody was acting crazy. Like they didn't know where the truck went. Uh, one of the guys in the shop told me one of the owner operators had broke down and took the truck. 
So, you know, I'm like, well, dang, they could have, you know, let me know something. And that was that what drew me over the edge. I said, you know what? My parents was trying to go ahead and get me on at the company they worked at since they had been there over 15 years. And they, you know, they was used to the way they worked. Um, they trusted them to let me come over and let, and prove that, you know, I'm going to do the same thing that they're doing. That I work hard. So um, I was able to get hired on and so did you how how is it working for how how is it family (laughs) daughter working for a mom and a a, a mom and pop literally company did you have to go through the same uh same thing as as a new driver would have to go through i mean they didn't try to they didn't try to show you no favoritism or nothing like that i mean you literally have to fill out an application I had to go through orientation and all that other stuff. They they yep. didn't treat you no different than they would treat a new driver coming into their company. Nope. I get fifty fifty just like everybody else get fifty fifty. Um when even when I got certified in the uh, straight ten, but when I went over the road those three months I was in the uh automatic. So they kinda threw me off being that I was new. So me coming back and driving for them I basically felt like I was starting over all again, all over again, because my mama put me in a super tent since I had never drove, and she 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 taught me how to drive in in a week. Okay, so she, she so drive. you so the company that you was at, you, you it, there was an automatic, but your yeah. your parents' company they got all they they got all manuals. They got everything. Now they got thirteens, uh, manuals. They got they got. Super 10, but yeah, she threw me off in the Super 10. I was lost. <laughs> so I can't say by the by the end of that week, I knew how to float. She made, she real life made me drive like anybody else, at least it was anybody else. Um, I've been in the truck on driving now for four years. Before my daddy put me in, and it's a straight 10. When my, before my daddy took me out that Super 10 and put me in the straight 10, he still made me do a road test. And I was like, are you, Are you serious? Yes. It's supposed to be family, know. yo. It is. I think he was more scared that I was going to be so used to that truck and drive uh, straight in. But I kept reminding him, on Saturdays when your drivers don't bring your truck to you, who brings your truck? Tressa, you got me driving some of everything. The only thing that I didn't 100% know I drive was the 13. But I could get that truck where I wanted to go. But uh, I wouldn't put it on the highway because I didn't know how to get all the way to 13 gear. But I knew how to okay. drive it where you basically still driving like a 10 speed. I could drive it up to that point. So I used to move all them trucks to drive from Dublin to Sandersville. They used to live in Sandersville then. And he used to make me do it. So I, I was confused when he, I thought he was kidding. Like he was like, I'm not peeing in that truck until you test drive it. I was like, why? You know, I move these trucks all the time. Like I drive them. 45 minutes up the road every other weekend. Why are you making me do a test? I thought he was playing. But okay. he realized made me show you I could drive it. Okay, yeah. He wanted to make so sure you uh, make sure you know how to drive it. <laughs> That's yeah, what's I up. To, I mean, I, I would know that for I, I was surprised when you said that he made you do a a, a, a driving test, but but I you know, he didn't want to he didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to show no favoritism. So so being uh being with the family. Uh, being with the family, they 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 treat you, they 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 don't they don't treat you like no other like no other driver. Like you know, this is my I'm daughter. Employee. You you treat it just like I'm an a, employee there. Yep. Now, when my daddy used to drive, he don't retire now. When my daddy used to drive. The only issue we came in contact with was like he's not my real daddy, daddy. Mm-hmm. He's my step dad, but I call him my daddy. Mm-hmm. I met him when I was grown, but I still call him my daddy. I mm-hmm. call him by his name. So mm-hmm. anybody ever see me out and about, I'm going to call him John. Okay. But when I'm talking about him, I say my daddy. I'm just, I don't know. I, it just stuck. <laughs> okay. But um, so the one issue he used to run into was little freaky stuff other men used to say about me around him. Mm-hmm. Um. Most of them didn't know that, you know. He, he was, was that mom. was his that was his family. And they, <laughs> he, mm-hmm. he pretty much he pretty much put a stop to all of that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's what's up. Yes. So I, I take it you was the only girl there. Uh yeah. With with my parents, yeah. Is there is there any other females that's driving for your family company or is it just still you? We we've actually had 
had five females. Uh, right now, it's me and one of my classmates. She's still with us. Uh, she's been over here about four years now. Oh, okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, that's, mm-hmm. it's cool. That and my mom still drives. Your mother still okay, so that's that's what's up, man. That's that's a beautiful thing to see that uh, to actually see you come from a family of trucking. You know what I'm saying? They actually uh, they actually got their own company, and this is look like it's a successful company. So what routes? Yeah. What what route? Uh, what what do you drive? I mean, you regional? You you drive all over, or what? What do you, what do you drive? Mm-hmm. You can pretty much call it regional. Um, I mainly do Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, and I go to Jackson, Florida. I don't like Florida. That's cheap freight. But uh, I pull containers, so um, Florida kind of cheap freight. So uh, I, I stick around Georgia, Alabama, and Tennessee. Oh, okay, okay. So well, that's... everything I do, I pull it from the port in Savannah, and you know, take it to those places and go back to the port. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, Von Tressa, the cake lady, man. Yeah. Man. Woo. A lot of, a lot of stories right there, man. That's what's up. Um, so you don't have no you you don't have no plans. You don't have no plans to 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 leave the family business. Is are is your is 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 your parents or your mom and you know her her husband? Are they grooming you to to like take over the business, or would you want to um, take over the business? I've heard like if it came down to it, I will. Cause when I say my daddy keep me on my toes, <laughs> mm-hmm. he keep me on my toes. But you know, even when you think you don't learn everything, you learn something new. So nah, they, um, they, they said they they said if you <laughs> if you think you learned everything in trucking, you need to hang your keys up. Don't know. Mhm. Keep on driving. You gonna learn some more. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna learn. You gonna learn today. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. you're definitely gonna learn today. But if you think you know everything, you think you Mister Know It All, then yeah, it's time to time to hang them yeah. keys up. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Definitely time to hang them keys up, man. All right. So before we get up out of here, man. Um, you you said in the beginning that you was a a plus size model. How how did you how, how did you get into that? Um, I always wanted to model, but you know, life happened. Uh, birth control happened, food happened, laziness happened. So that pushed me on the plus size end. So uh, I thought it was over it for that. But then you know, I found that company. Which somebody else told me about it. I used to do photo shoots every year for my birthday, uh, just for something to do. And I went into a Starbucks in McDonald's. I know it was McDonald's. Um, and the lady was telling me about that company. I'm like, I, I read that. Like, I don't think I was already following the guy. So I uh, I reached out. She's like, I really think you should be with them. So, you know, say something since I reached out. And that's how I got tied up with them. But okay. I had already been doing it, like a modeling uh, portfolio that year before, all that year before. I just didn't know what else I needed to do. So okay. we all still learn, but becoming a model is about like these people trying to be a rapper. Like if you get chose, you get chose. It ain't nothing there. Hey, so, I'm the best. So let me ask you, you this. So working. you so you they 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 found you. So you it wasn't like you was like an Instagram model because modeling no. modeling today when when somebody come and say, "Hey, I'm a model," you you right. automatically I, well I automatically think Instagram because like right. back in the day when you used to say I'm a model, then I'm thinking like uh I'm thinking like uh like top models like the magazine models and all like that. Right. But you know now you know every you know everything's different. Every everything that was in print is now digital and all like that. And right. then you got every you got every you got every girl and her mama, you know, taking taking selfies in a in a you know in a bathing suit and say, "I'm right. an Instagram model, I, I'm a model." Right. But you, you you ain't no model. You yeah, you just like take pictures. Yeah. <laughs> so you so you you wasn't you you wasn't like that. You actually got uh 
you actually got an agency behind you that actually pays you to do modeling for certain well, for certain place for we certain get places. paid for certain stuff like um it make them people easier to find us if they want us to you know model something for them like clothes and runway stuff we don't like that was what i was saying about the little rapper thing uh <laughs> It's hard. It's hard to like real life get, become a paid paid model like for every gig. So we get lucky. Get I, I call it a few dollars because it ain't you don't be much or nothing. And most of the time you just gonna get trade for pics or free clothes or they do whatever they can to basically not put money in your pocket because they feel like okay, well I provided the clothes so you know you can just keep oh, it. Okay. I don't. Oh, you, it's, so have you? It's more a bit. Have you, well, there's now, I, you know, I, I come across a lot of, I come across a lot of females on uh, YouTube that does clothing hauls for, for, you know, for major brands like, uh, what's that, Fashion Nova, uh, mm-hmm. Xfinity, I think that's Rihanna's, I think that's mm-hmm. Rihanna's thing, uh, you know, they, they, you know, they reach out to, you know, to young ladies to, you know, do they, you know, to do they haul videos. Have you been, have you been, uh, reached out for that? Any, any of that? No, but I have been posted on, um, Ashley Stewart website. Oh, okay. Um, they ran across my pictures. They posted me on their uh, main website before. Nope. They didn't pay me. Um, what? <laughs> Yeah, uh, more of that than anything. It's real hard. Like, even those women that's getting those hauls, they they did not get paid. Yeah, they're not paid. They just get the clothes. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that's it. Like, I don't don't got free lingerie. Like, you might see a lot of that on my Instagram. Um, I've done a lot of lingerie because I I model for a couple of uh, people that sell it. Mm -hmm. And basically they was like oh well you confident with your body and i want plus size and that's what we need i want plus size women to buy from me and i got stuff your size you know what i'm saying so i was okay with it because there's a lot of there's some there's some nice uh, nice plus size women out here that you know that does uh that does lingerie hauls i mean granted there's a few in my well i'm a man you know, a few in right. my opinion that shouldn't be, but hey, I you know I, I'm I'm cool with a big woman. You know what I'm saying? You know, I yeah. mean, I I don't have no problem. Uh, you know, I like I said, you know, <laughs> I I you know I'm subscribed to a few uh, uh, plus size women uh, on their fashion hauls and all like that. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, a truck driver, a female truck driver. Uh, was interested in doing, you know, plus size hauls, and I told her, you know, that you know that that party might be a niche right there because it's not, it's not female truck drivers that's that's doing the plus size haul. You see what I'm saying? Right. So I said that might be a that might be a niche that you can that you can look into, but you know, right. she's still in a in the dis- in the deciding phase so but uh but yeah. yeah you know there's a there's a there's a niche out here for you know for plus size hauls and you're right they they don't get paid they they just get the they just get the uh you know the the uh the clothes, the clothes and the way they do get paid is by the the views of course oh, the too. subscriptions and all like that yep. you know because you know, I'll say ninety percent men, or no, let me re, let me bring that back. Twenty, eighty percent men, twenty percent women. I want to say that. I, I I think, I think that's a roundabout number. You know what I'm saying? But this this one female that she do got. I, I'll say it's seventy or seventy percent women. 30% men. You see what I'm saying? So Right. But it's uh up and down, but yeah, you know. For a female for a female YouTuber, trust me, you you you're going to yeah. become popular anyway. As long as you got boobs. <laughs> as right. long as you got 
as long as you got boobs, you're gonna have a whole bunch of dudes come to your come to your Instagram. You're gonna come to your your Facebook. Gonna come to your uh, YouTube page, and you got these. You got you know. I don't want to call us thirsty, man, but I mean it's it's just wait. Like if a, if a dude like myself trying to let's say if I'm trying to shoot my shot with somebody. It's a sea of motherfuckers that I gotta go through. Like, look, man, come on. You got dudes yeah. like you got dudes like, oh, I wish you was with me, and look what I can do, and this, that, and, and look, the third. Those gonna be the ones to get looked over because you kind of selling. You know what I'm saying? Kind of selling the dream. I got, I got homeboys right now that'll tell you they done tried to talk to me before, and I didn't take them serious because it, it. You, it was too good to be true, and I was right. I was right. You, you wanted what you wanted. So me, when it gets to that point where I can't tell, you know, hey, you know, you like me or you, you want to screw right. me, which, which one you want? Right. I, I ask because I'm real blunt. So I'm like, you know, don't don't lie about it. <laughs> Just right. Be honest. I like, mean, you got it. dudes like I said. You know, I, like I said, you got dudes like. You got dudes that's trying to shoot their shots and all like that. You got dudes that come on the internet just just saying any old kind of shit though. I got finished talking to uh I got finished talking to uh another young lady I did an interview with, and she said like on her Instagram, dudes actually send her dick pics. Like, really, bro? Yep. Yeah. Who uh, who I mean, I come on. Like a woman, I mean, like, but she said there's females that actually show news. Like she said, she got a friend that you know she was, you know, she got a friend, and the uh, and and the, he's a truck driver, and and the chick actually shot, sent him a nude, and I mean, like, for a man, for a woman to send the man news, of course, man going to be like, oh yeah, that was good, you know. You know, mm-hmm. it, uh, a man's mode of thinking is totally different on a woman's mode of thinking. Now, if you're trying to get with this woman, I don't think shooting a dick pic no is going to do it. <laughs> right. Even if it was mutual, I think that's kind of over the top because if it's mutual, it's going to happen anyway. You know what I'm saying? Because right. Because now you're going to have to find a, a way to balance out, okay, I'm not thirsty over you, but I got to let you know I like you a little bit, you know? So, right. I feel like dick pics too much. Y'all gonna see each other probably more after a while, you know. But um, me, I'm blunt. I'm blunt. Like if I see somebody like they they really trying, but I know that's all they want. If that's all I want to, I tell them. You know, we get to know each other. And I tell them. Yeah. It's been a while, you know. Mm-hmm. Might as well. Cause me, I don't trust easy, so I go a long time without it. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of you. Uh, OK, I'll, so I got to I, I got to stop you right there. You you just now okay. I understand. I understand trust issues and all like that. But damn it, man. What do you uh, what do you what do you got? <laughs> you know, this is kind of blunt, but what do you guys do? Okay. What, what do you guys do in that meantime? I, I like to know, like uh, how how do you guys satisfy yourself? Because you 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 the type of person that be like, yo, uh, I, I mean, you just say you could go a long time and all like that, and that's cool. Yeah. I get it because you know you probably might be writing for the right one, and and maybe that right one was gonna take a long time to get there. But god damn it, man! I mean, what what do you guys do? In the meantime, as long as I don't went without it was nine months. Nine months. Yes, oh. and last year nine months. <laughs> nine months, like look, the dude I'm currently dating, he still don't believe me to this day. Last year in June, in June and September, I had sex once in June, once in September. Before December got there, I started dating him around November, so. We ain't gonna count these some. Those are the only times I had sex mm. last year. So when he actually finally got it, he was like, I just, I believe you, but I don't want to because your sister are high. I said, well, How you think my sister are high? I done been holding out and holding out because mm. I'm dating people and they feel like, okay, I think I got her, you know, and they don't do what they're supposed to do. So that's how that 
situation where, oh, they only got it one time, happens because now you feel like, okay, I got a title, you know, or you did a little bit more talking than you should have, you know, you wasn't open to do this or do that or try, you know, something that worked. Like, you can't just <laughs> do what you want and think you're doing a good job. I got you. You got to be open. So, to so the guy, so, awesome. so the guy that you, the guy that you're dating, he's, he's a truck driver as well. Yes. So how, how did you guys meet up? Like did what? How how do how do how do drivers or how how do uh, male drivers see when you pull up in the in the truck stop, right, and and they see you hop up out hop up out the truck? What 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 experience you get from from other male drivers when they see you hop up out the truck? A lot of them just look because like I said, I'm so used to playing poker face. I do it at knowing I'm doing it. So they won't say nothing. Like, they won't approach. A lot of them, um, if they know some of my homeboys, they'll try to go through them and say something. Or, um, like, in person, I ain't really had nobody like this. They'll just, most of them will start a conversation. But I have had people that, you know, felt like, they, it was just rumor going around saying I was stuck up. Mm-hmm. But, like I said, I'm, I'm real nice. Like, my dad is like that. He really does look like you would think he was a mean guy because he just carries himself like that, but he's he sweet. Oh, okay. <laughs> so well, sometimes you got to uh, carry yourself like that because, you know, a lot of right. a lot of these truck drivers don't don't respect women in the game as already. Right. So you got to you got to have some type of uh, some type of stance about yourself. But right. You know. So the guy, everybody so, tried to talk to me. That's why they was afraid to talk to me. They was like, it was just this rumor going around saying, "Oh, she mean as hell. She stuck up." You know. Okay. So it was funny every time I I heard it. Even with the dude I'm dating now, he was like, "Man, they were wrong about you." You know. I was like, so "What you heard about me?" You know. <laughs> so then he started going. He told me same stuff I don't hear before. I'm like, it's funny. Like y'all sit back and come up with y'all own scenario. I said, now nah, a lot of people feel like because. They used to women flocking to them and that I don't do that. That makes me stuff up. It's, no, I'm just ain't. They ain't how I was raised. Okay, I'm okay. not like. That. So how? So I mean, again, so again, this this is a truck driver that you're dating right now. How how did you guys come yeah. come together? Uh, he used to see me in the sh- at the well. He said we were at work. He said we parted at the same truck stop. But like I said, I a lot of times I learned not to look at people truck. <laughs> mm-hmm. I learned not to look at people too long because everybody be feel like, oh, she likes me because you look there, you can say good morning, and a man will be like, oh my god, yeah, she likes she me. Likes like, me. I was being talking nice. to me, right? So, I mean, I speak to somebody speak to me, but I was careful about how long I look to somebody, or like I might glance around my, you know, see what's going on, but I won't just study what's going on around me, like our real life. Park my truck and sped walk to my car every day when I work and when I parked that truck stop. So okay. he said he parked there as well, but he never said anything to me. But he used to see me in the port all the time. And every time I seen him, he always talked to me, but he didn't push up on me. Now, um, we were friends on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So I, it took me a while to start friending truck drivers because like I said, with the truck driver friends I had, the stuff they were telling them to tell me, I was like, nah, that ain't it. I'm not <laughs> a fan. Stuff. I'm I'm not a fan of Facebook. And it's just unfortunate that it's unfortunate that the Facebook is like the new black book now. It's like right. it's it's like when I when I was coming up, I was, you know, getting female phone numbers and all like that. I, I had a black book. I you know, before before cell phones you know, I, you know, we had the pay phones and all like that. I, I was, I used to do the malls, hang out on the malls on Saturdays, and I used to just, you know, have my little black book with all my female phone numbers in there and all like that. But now, it's like Facebook is like the new, it's like the new black book, mm-hmm. and you come meet somebody like, yeah, I don't want to give you my phone number, but you can look me up on Facebook, You're like, uh. right. Mm, okay. Yeah, and that, that that will happen. And like like I said, me driving for a local, well, you can call it local, local family business. I was careful of who I talked to and dated anyway because I didn't want to become. Because me, 
you know how they say, uh, first thing you do wrong, you cut them up. I don't, I don't want one of those. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but if I don't told you, I'd be like, mm, no, no. But um, I didn't want to become. I want well, maybe a disgrace to the family of oh, dang, she talked to our truck driver. Right, you know what I'm saying? So right. You didn't want to be. Off. You didn't want to be that driver. Right. So that's why, like I said, it wasn't no whole lot of sense going on because I didn't want to create a name for myself. I already know. Just from a woman, even though it's spaced out, they'll be like, oh, but she had this many bodies. He, all these people drive trucks. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I didn't want to be that person. So I I just talked on the phone. That's what's up. That is what's up. Well, Von Tessa. Why to get- <laughs> Von Tressa Salter. Yes, sir. Man. Well, thank you very much for coming on and, uh, and, and 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 sharing your experience and everything. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. You're very welcome, man. Yo, man, the cake lady. Where where can uh where where can people find you on your uh, on your social media? Um, at cake lady, uh, Tressa. On Instagram, C A K E L A D Y T R E S S A. There it is. That's Cake Lady Tressa. Oops. Hold on. Well, my internet is running kind of slow. But I, th- I think I got you as a friend. Am I following you? Yes. I should be following. Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I'm not. Follow back. There we go. There we go. All right. If, so. if that's Instagram, Instagram being unfollowing us every day. <laughs> yeah, but I'm I'm, been, uh, I'm follow I'm following you now. I'm, uh, you got okay. all this uh look like cake stuff on here. Look at that. Hey. Yeah, and I'm switching over to the hip side of life though. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you it's say you give you giving, you giving up the cakes, huh? You giving up the cakes. Well, I make them, but I don't eat them. <laughs> well, all right. I like this pound cake. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, Tessa, the cake lady. Thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate it. And if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me, it's very easy to do. All you got to do is hit me up in the Gmail, lockoutmanpodcast at gmail.com. Hit me up over at Instagram or hit me at 216 600 2090. Man, Tressa, it was awesome talking to you, man. I mean, I I really do appreciate this. This was a great conversation. Man. We're nice speaking with you as well. Very much, very much. And if you got, like I said, if you guys want more content like this, just hit, hit that like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. I am your host, Lockout Men, and this is Tressa, the cake lady. If you ever see her, say what's up to her. On that note, we are out of here.